I don't know who this person is. I don't know. Okay, I'm going to be completely honest, though. Regardless of, like, what, what accusations have gone forward, like, I think it's always bad to do a ukulele response to basically any allegation. Unless the allegation is you can't play ukulele, at which point I do think it's justified to play ukulele in response. My lovely imps, uh, I have been turned, uh, I have been tuned into, uh, tuned, you know, like a ukulele. <laughs> I have been tuned into some very strange drama. Now, to be fair, I was sent a video about this a couple of weeks ago, but I had, I have been swamped in a million other things. So I actually haven't gotten a chance to look into all this. So we're doing it now. And the reason we're doing it now is because um, the person, a person who goes by the name of Miranda Sings, a YouTuber by the name of Miranda Sings, um, has been accused of some pretty heinous things and has decided to respond like right now with a ukulele song. And we have watched, uh, 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 I'm gonna rewind just so we can make sure that this is all laid out and kind of makes sense in order, but I watched about a minute of it and I am, I've been losing my mind. Um, so we're gonna actually watch the, the thing now and I'm going to see if it continues to make me lose my mind because this is the weirdest thing that I've ever seen in my entire life. Uh, normally when I do, um, drama stuff i try to prepare a whole bunch in advance but apparently you know a lot of the videos are are fairly easy to keep track of and this ukulele video just dropped and i'm going to be completely honest with you all just straight out the gate i am now very interested because i have never seen anyone try to respond to extremely severe abuse allegations via a ukulele song and you know, maybe I'm a bad person, but I have to say that has now caught my interest. So I guess here we go. Um, yeah. All right, let's do this. This is, uh, this is Miranda Sings ukulele from Colleen Vlogs. This is a video titled Hi, and it's a ukulele song about allegations of abuse let's go let's do it hey it's been a while since you saw my face i haven't been doing so great so i took a little break Actually, no, you know what? When we do the video, I'm just going to go to the place where we were. I'm not going to replay this. Uh, we can just edit it such that it, you know, the intro comes after. Who cares? Let's do this. Let's get back to where we were. I'm not watching that first part again. Let's go. I recently realized that they never said that I couldn't sing what I want to say. So, here I am. And. Uh so her team said, don't talk about this publicly and she said well you didn't say that I couldn't sing about it did she think she was having a Bo Burnham moment okay guys Bo Burnham would never <laughs> Bo Burnham would absolutely never be this dumb look okay I'm sorry um I don't know what level of like self delusion you have to be on I don't, we have not watched all the allegations yet, so I'm not coming to any co conclusions about any of the veracity of any of claims so far, okay? We haven't watched any of it, all right? However, all I'm gonna say is that you have to be on a special level to think that responding to allegations with a ukulele track is the right way to go. 
especially when your team says, please, God, do not respond to this stuff. That is a, that's a, that is a, that, what's beyond a red flag? What It's like a, a, it's like a, a red giant, like the star, you know, like the giant red, st and you're flying straight into it. Um, today I only want to talk about the facts. So, uh, a good start. I hope that you'll be willing to listen. Here we go. Many years ago, I used to message my fans, uh, but not in a creepy way, like a lot of you are trying to suggest. It was more of a loser kind of way, where I was just trying to be... ...besties with everybody. It's kind of like uh, when you go to like a family gathering, you know, and there's a weird aunt there who keeps coming up to you and going like, hey girl, what's the tea? And you're like, Ugh. Um, that was me, but in group chats with my fans. It was weird. I've been sharing my life online for over 15 years. I've poured my heart out to you, and because of that, I feel like I'm talking to my friends. But in the beginning of my career, I didn't really understand that maybe there should be some boundaries there. There were times in the DMs when I would overshare details of my life, which was really weird of me. I haven't done that for years, you see, because I changed my behavior and I took accountability. But that's not very interesting, is it? So let's go on the toxic gossip train. The locomotive's fueled with hateful accusations. The toxic gossip train. Steamroll over someone's reputation. Toxic gossip train. Hop on board but close your eyes. Otherwise you'll realize that the train is made of lies. And that person you despise maybe didn't deserve to die. But hey. At least you're having fun. Well, you're not dead. She's not dead. I'm just going to point that she's not... She's not dead. So that is a bit of a weird thing to put into the song. Because you're playing the song in your YouTube video right now. In all seriousness, I do think it's really important to hold people accountable for their mistakes. Um, you know, we should hope that everyone can learn from their mistakes and grow and change their behavior and be a better person. And this is something that I've always tried to do when I make mistakes, and it's something that I will continue to try to do. What? Oh, you don't care? Oh, okay. I thought you wanted me to take accountability, but that's not the point of your mob mentality, is it? No. Your goal is to ruin the life of the person you despise while you dramatize your lies and monetize their demise. comments on this video. She's gaslighting, manipulating, oh she's a narcissist and a rat. I would never make a mistake like that. Oh, I'm sorry I didn't realize that all of you are perfect so please criticize me. Bring out the daggers made from your perfect past and stab oh me repeatedly my in my bony oh. little back. I'm sure you're disappointed in my shitty little song. I know you wanted me to say that I was 100% in the wrong. Well, I'm sorry. I'm not going to take that route of admitting to lies and rumors that you made up for clout. Oh. Hey, everybody, I found someone new to harass. She did some things that I do not like in her past. So everybody gather around because we're about to attack, but not based on facts. Oh, no. Your loaded lethal weapon is your fingers on the keys. You don't need any armor when you can hide behind a screen. So shoot me down quick in the click and bam. My reputation's deceased. Okay. We're gonna take just a second for a breather here, okay? Because, again, I'm gonna be as, you know, forthright as possible. Uh, we have not yet watched through the allegations yet, which is... You know, actually, usually the way that we do things, just as a matter of policy, is I will watch allegations first. In this case, because of the nature of the response, I am watching the response first. Okay? That's the just so we're clear. Secondly, I think a way to severely damage your reputation is to make a ukulele song where you imply that every person who is mad at you 
and every person who might have criticisms of you is an annoying keyboard warrior and also um that and that they're trying to kill you uh i i'm just gonna say i think that's a really really promising way to damage your reputation maybe might be even more damaging to your reputation than people being mad at you on the internet i am i am very surprised by the direction that this has gone Ugly Pie says, I've been keeping up with the accusations and I just came in to hear this song. I'm actually flabbergasted. Apology video with your 12 string guitar win? Well, I do need to tune it actually. I've been out of practice lately. I don't know. This year I haven't been do up on my practice, but um, okay. Can I just say, um, if I ever, if I ever make an apology video to music, um, to like serious allegate or or actually if I ever make an apology video to to music of any type you should you should f find out whether I'm actually being held by uh the 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 mob okay because that is m most likely what's been going on there's there's no I, I just I don't understand it I I don't please uh, yeah come rescue me send John Wick to save me or something uh, I also wanted to take a minute to talk about that girl Miranda sings. You know the one. Yeah, her? Uh, she's PG-13. It says that on my website, and it's always been that way. And that's why you won't find my videos on the YouTube Kids app. Anyway, um, I didn't realize it was... What? 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 So, okay, so... PG... What's the PG third? What? Um. Uh, um. Is that a? Is this like a? Uh, m maybe I don't understand. But is this like a? Um. Actually, it's a phobophilia argument. Oh. Uh. Sorry, guys. Um. I can't have done some weird shit with young fans because it's PG thirteen and technically it's a phobophilia. Is that? Is that what I, is that what just happened? Did I just witness the the uh, quirky twee YouTuber equivalent of that? It's my responsibility to decide what was appropriate for every kid to see. I've always relied on parents to decide if they're comfortable with their families watching my YouTube videos or coming to my live shows. Is that what's on the table? I'm sorry, is... Is that what... Again, we're giving her the benefit of the doubt here by reacting to her response in the first place. Were people... Were there problems with people watching her videos? Were, was she saying swears or so, like? That sounds like what you would say if people were mad that you played Doom when your show was like for teenagers or something. It's like, oh, violent video games. And then you go, well, my show is PG-13. So just so you know, occasionally I might say a swear or there might be some cartoon violence. Not like I've been accused of, of, uh, of like inappropriate relations with young fans. Have I made some jokes in poor taste? Yes. Have I made lots of dumb mistakes? Yes. Am I sad that there are some fans who feel betrayed? Yes. But was my intention to manipulate? No. Um. It doesn't really matter what my intention was, because it seems as though everyone's already decided on that. Well, I can say this. Here on this show, we're actually reacting in reverse order to the way that we usually do. So we haven't decided on anything yet, but I will say that a ukulele response like this, where you're sort of cattily mocking everyone who's in disagreement with you over very serious allegations is 
definitely not making me feel more charitable. It is definitely making me go, I need to look into this deeper because um, that's sus. That is some, that is some amogus tier imposter. What the fuck is going on? Why are you saying, I didn't manipulate you. I didn't abuse all your kids. Nothing bad happened after the backstage. I don't even know, like what? Th that makes me go, I like, that does not have the effect of making me believe anybody more is all I'm gonna say. And uh, again, like, oh, oh boy. Let's go. Let me tell you, it's not very fun. Nuts says getting the context doesn't help and is a waste of time. Throw her ass into the void. No, 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 no. Look, I already don't like doing drama mama stuff off the cuff. I tend to really avoid it, but you had me at ukulele YouTuber apology, so you'll have to forgive me. But no, we will not be throwing anyone's ass to the void, especially because we have stuff to dig through now. You guys wanted me to talk about this? Well, I'm talking about it, and we're gonna do it the Demon Mama way, which means we look at the facts. To have millions of people all over the world call you the most vile, horrendous, disgusting, life-ruining words that a person can be called, in my opinion. Um, it doesn't matter that these things aren't true. Uh, everyone just believes- Oh my god, you're right! Another bored person said, this is literally the Danny DeVito I Don't Diddle Kids song. <laughs> no! <laughs> you, you, <laughs> I didn't even think of that! <laughs> <laughs> Why can't I should be able to play that right now? It should be I should be when a youtuber issues a ukulele apology We should be legally allowed to ignore copyright law in order to play the Danny DeVito. I don't diddle kids song. Oh, man Why has it got to be this way? Why has it got to be this way? Why we got to Why we got to live like this? Eeps that you are the type of person who manipulates and abuses children. You want to sing the song? Not today, feds. There is, there is no fucking way. Are you crazy? Are you, are you crazy? No, that's the worst thing to do. Who, who wants to take me? Well, why do you want to take me down? Why would you, you piece of shit. Oh man. You piece of shit. So I just wanted to say that um, the only thing I've ever groomed is my two Persian cats. I'm not a groomer. Oh! I just wanted to say that um, the only thing I've ever groomed is my two Persian cats. I'm not a groomer, I'm just a loser who didn't understand I shouldn't respond to fans and I'm not a predator. This isn't real. You guys lied to me. This is fake. I am in the, uh, this is the matrix. This is AI. This can't be real. This can't be real. There's no way. There's no way that someone said, I got accused of grooming, uh, uh, of grooming my fans and news articles are being written about it. And I'm going to write a ukulele song where I say, I, I, the only people I ever groomed was my cats. This is, this cannot be real. But unfortunately, I hate to tell you, this is real. This is the real, actual Colleen Vlogs channel with 3.38 million uh, subscribers. This was uploaded four hours ago with 200,000 views already. 
This is actually real. Unironically, actually real. I guess we better finish the ukulele song, huh? Even though a lot of you think so, because five years ago I made a fart joke. What? So, even though I know this video won't change anyone's mind about me, I still felt it was important to come on here defend myself a little and take accountability and I also wanted to say that to anyone out there who has ever supported me in any capacity I really really appreciate you thank you for what it's worth I never had any bad intentions um but I do feel like shit. The toxic gossip train I'm jogging down the tracks of misinformation Toxic gossip train You got a one-way ticket to manipulation station Toxic gossip train You tied me to the tracks and harassed me for my past Rumors look like facts when you don't mind the gaps I won't survive in the crash, but hey Is this... I hope you had some fun Oh, no, it's not Actually, over. You know. Oh, no. Oh, no, we still have two minutes to go. I feel like maybe I should let you guys know something. Um, it seems like maybe you're confused about something. I don't know. Let me try to help. Um, sometimes people make a mistake. And it doesn't make them a horrible person, whoa Sometimes people can make a mistake And they're still a good person Crazy, I know Sometimes people can make a mistake And you don't have to take that mistake, oh no And twist it up and grind it And add some lies to it And pulverize it And stab it with knives And ruin a life and Oh no, sometimes people can make a mistake It doesn't mean you gotta send them hate, oh no Sometimes people can make a mistake And you can kindly let them know And help them to grow Okay, I know I'm interrupting the song again But as a uh, Miranda Sings outsider This vlog channel has 3.38 million subscribers and the Miranda Sings YouTube channel has over 10 million subscribers. So when she says that her life is over or whatever, I just don't think that's true. This is one of those um, I'm being silenced things that you hear where it's like, no, like you have a gigantic platform much larger than those who have brought allegations against you like by a million fold and um and and you chose a ukulele song why what why you have 10 million plus subscribers and 3 million on your vlog channel and you you chose to respond by Ukulele, so your life isn't over. What are you talking about? I am. She has a Netflix show? 
Like, I just, I find this to be a really suspect thing to do when your song is mostly about how your life is ruined and they, and people killed you, but actually you still have a massively successful enterprise, a nice house, a gigantic channel, income streams, probably in the millions of dollars. That's an insane thing for me to say. Like, don't get me wrong. I have talked about how unfair and uneven internet cancellation can be, how internet dog piles get out of hand, how there could, how like false cancellations can build up and that it doesn't even matter if they're true or false anymore. But we haven't even gotten to that part. This is just the ukulele response on a 3.5 million subscriber, almost 3.3 3 million, sorry, subscriber channel. And the, the gist of this song so far has been, um, you said a lie about me and now I'm dead. From a video, a ukulele on, on a 3.3 million subscriber channel. Okay, all right. Sometimes people make mistakes simply because they made a mistake. Mistake doesn't make them a terrible human. It just makes them a human. But what do I know? Um. Fuck me, right? Um. Okay. Okay. Um. Wow, the Rolling Stone is writing about this. Okay. So maybe we should take some time real quick and we're going to read through this uh, Rolling Stone article, this is a, this is, this is a culture article published by the Rolling Stone. This was eight days ago before the ukulele uh, apology came out, okay? So we're going, um, we're gonna go a little bit backwards in time. And then we're gonna see if we can get to any of these allegations directly. Yeah, we're doing a drama mama today. I didn't think we were doing a drama mama today, but we're doing a drama mama today. Um, Tipster says, the only response to allegations that is worse than this one is the time that Sienna May did an, 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 a TikTok interpretive dance after being accused of sexual assault. That's insane. That is an insane thing to do. That is a, I, but I actually don't know. Is that worse than this? This seems worse. This actually might be worse. That is definitely weird, but this might be worse. I, I don't know. Okay, let's watch this article real quick, or let's read this article together. Fans built her an internet empire. Now they're tearing it down by the Rolling Stone. Four former fans of Colleen Ballinger tell Rolling Stone the same access that, that made the, sa the, comedi the, the comedian famous open the door for interaction they describe as toxic, exploitative, and hurtful. When Adam McIntyre was 10 years old, he found something he thought was utterly and breathtakingly overwhelmingly special, YouTube. Sure, the Irish preteen had the same classes, the same background as most of his peers in England, but while his classmates followed more mainstream celebrities, pop sensations, and blockbuster action stars, McIntyre, I think that's right, McIntyre? McIntyre, maybe I said it wrong the first time, uh, on the new site and its budding brand of superstars. YouTubers back then was not, or YouTubers back then was not like it is now. It was a very weird concept. It felt so much different than anyone who was in my class at school. 
To distract himself from bullying and other difficulties of early adolescence, he began combing through videos on YouTube and found a favorite in comedian Colleen Ballinger. But what started as a gradual offhand interest quickly brought McIntyre, Mac, McIntyre, McIntyre, why, why am I struggling with this name so much? McIntyre, I'm struggling, I'm sorry. Into a close friendship with Ballinger that now at 20 he alleges was exploitative, abusive, and toxic. Ballinger denied these claims in 2020, but has not responded to additional complaints or Rolling Stone's re multiple requests for comment. Okay. So here's a here's an immediate thing. If the Rolling Stone is doing an article on you and they give you the opportunity to reply, that might be a, a better option than replying via ukulele song. Um, it would it might be a good idea to talk to a lawyer. I would generally tell anybody to do that. But responding via the Rolling Stone might be better than ukulele song. Just just gonna say okay yeah maybe I should become a PR advisor for youtubers honestly but but the problem is is see this is where it gets really weird because if and we we can't we haven't made any decisions yet no conclusions have been drawn except for ukulele video really weird really really off-putting really uncomfortable that is the only conclusion okay but I will say um, if these allegations are not true and we dig through this and we find that there's not a lot of you know meat to them or whatever which i have to say seems unlikely given the fact that this is a mainline rolling stone article um that does they you know the rolling stone they're not a perfect organization but they do tend to do their uh do tend to do their journalistic uh uh digging um but we'll wait and see um it's actually, I feel worse if the, if if this person didn't do anything wrong because now they've convinced everyone via ukulele, a horribly unlikable ukulele song that they're the most sus person on the planet. But I would not be interested in helping someone, a, like a bad person, get away with shit, which is why I wouldn't do YouTuber PR. You know, because I don't want to help people get out of bad situations. Maybe I should become like the YouTuber Saul Goodman, where like I I I help I help people who didn't do anything that bad get out of like long and unjust prison prison sentences or something like that. You know, maybe yeah, better call Demon Mama. Yeah, something like that. Maybe that would be a better option. Anyway, let's continue. There needs to be a term for gaslighting via ukulele. Ukulating, you get ukulele, ukulele lighting. There we go. Ukulele lighting. There we go. We got it. Lock it in, everybody. Let's go. <clears throat> okay. Uh, and as more of the first true children of the internet come of age and reevaluate their online relationships with their favorite YouTube stars, another realization is sweeping and shattering internet fandoms. The intimate way early YouTube stars cultivated relationships with their followers made them famous. It also opened the doors for widespread abuse. In the past three weeks, Ballinger has been accused of abusing her power and engaging in toxic parasocial relationships with fans. Past and current members of her team, including her best friend, Corey De Soto, her ex-husband Joshua Davis Evans, and her brother Trent Ballinger have also been accused of using Ballinger's fame and access to inappropriate mess inappropriately message underage followers. Holy shit! Fans have said they were sent inappropriate texts by Trent, asked about their sex lives by Ballinger, and in one case bullied over their weight by DeSoto. McIntyre says that the YouTube star created a reputation for personally responding and interacting with fans, a power he claims she took advantage of for content. And four, other fans tell Rolling Stone that the same access that made Ballinger famous opened the door for behind the scenes interactions they describe as toxic, exploitative, and hurtful. Ballinger, Trent, and DeSoto did not respond to multiple requests for comment from the Rolling Stone. So this looks like 
This looks like the video by Adam McIntyre. Yes, this was the, okay, I see. So maybe we will have to react to this next. This was from three weeks ago. Yes, this was the video I was sent that I have not yet been able to react okay, to. I guess, so, uh, I guess we will watch this today. This isn't the first time YouTubers have faced backlash over their interactions with fans. In 2021, beauty guru, guru James Charles, now that was a sus ass situation, let me tell you that. We did not cover James Charles on here, but I, I did actually look into that. That was incredibly, incredibly out of line. James Charles was totally out of line. In January, former YouTube star Onision was sued by two plaintiffs that alleged he used his channel's popularity to groom them through personal forums while they were 14. He has repeatedly de denied those claims and mediation is scheduled for late 2023. So while Ballinger's allegations aren't criminal or even hint that she's used her power to start sexual relationships, According to Sasha Judd, a tech executive writer and expert on fandom, it sheds light on how, with insular subcultures like YouTube fan groups, stars can hold intense emotional power even when they're not doing anything illegal. Sucked on left says, I liked and chatted to boost the algorithm. Thank you very much. By the way, if you are sitting here watching right now, we are doing a very spontaneous uh, drama mama on the allegations against uh, Colleen Ballinger, AKA Miranda Sings. So if you're here, get settled in, please press that like button. We wanna get as many people seeing this as possible and consider subscribing to my channel since I do interesting things like this all the time. In addition to talking about my general interests, uh, politics and all kinds of other cool stuff. So uh, thanks for being here. This has been a weird one so far, but I think it's gonna be an interesting ride and hopefully we'll learn something from it too. Uh, like, for example, here's one thing. Remember how I say my goal is to always teach people at least one thing per day? Don't do a ukulele-based apology for severe allegations ever. Don't ever do it. Just do, don't, don't. Don't do it. Now you know. Congratulations. Let's continue. Within the subcultures that arise from fandom, there's this idea of capital that's associated with access, Judd tells Rolling Stone. You know that you have increased cultural capital within the community that you're a part of. So whenever there's an opportunity to actually be in contact with the object of your fandom, that's just sort of ripe for a really unbalanced power dynamic. Because the fan is nobody to the famous person, and the famous person is absolutely everybody to the fan. And that can produce some pretty giant red flags. That's a really good point. And in fact, I'm gonna draw a quick parallel. You guys remember the infamous Trump uh, grabber by the pussy uh, comment? Well, everybody remembers the grabber by the pussy thing, but they don't remember what happened right before that, which is when he says, when you're a star, they'll let you do anything. You can kiss them right on the mouth and they won't say anything. That was in fact part of, uh, uh, that was actually used in evidence uh, to support the idea that he has an incredibly uh, uh, cavalier and irresponsible attitude uh, towards sexual relations, which he has abused in the past. And keep in mind that Donald Trump was recently uh, found uh, 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 liable for massive damages against uh, the victim uh, against a victim of sexual assault, which he perpetrated. Um, so it is actually true that. Um, there is a very dangerous parasocial effect um, that can happen. And this is especially true with people who are appealing to young fans because young people, I mean, guys, okay, let's just, let's just, let's just talk about this. This is an infamous problem uh, among traditional celebrities. It's not just YouTube celebrities where this is a problem. Keep in mind that like, um, rock stars of the past how many rock star stars literally uh, uh abused uh, like like dozens upon dozens of young fans uh groupies uh uh by by utilizing the fame that they had uh to bring people onto their tour bus to bring people backstage to take advantage of them knowing that they had all the power and the fan had none Can you get me a clip of that, Delini? If you have a clip of that, uh, if 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 you have a clip of that, um, I would look at that. Yeah, there are a ton of of rock musicians who have been proven 
to have abused young fans. Um, uh, 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 you know, it, it's a huge problem. This is not like a, that is not a new issue at all. Fame is a form, is an incredible form of power. It doesn't mean you're all powerful. That doesn't mean that every famous person is automatically guilty of any bad thing that they're accused of, obviously. However, it does mean that that people, when they reach a certain level of celebrity, have an undue amount of social power that has to be checked and has to be kept aware of. There is a reason that like certain music shows are not safe for young people to go to, not because of the music that's on stage or anything like that, but rather because the band, the members of the band are known predators. Gayfesh says it feels like most of the rock stars from the 70s fucked underage fans. It's a, it was a huge problem in the 70s and 80s. Obviously, um, and, and keep in mind that in that period of time, there was basically no chance that you were going to have a voice against a celebrity. If you were just some random person, how would you ever have your story told, heard? Kid Rock once sang the song, said, you call it statutory, I call it mandatory. That's insane. Oh boy, okay. So yeah, um, actually it's interesting. I should take a second here to talk about this. Um, this is actually an issue that we've been talking about a lot lately on this channel. Um, with uh, many of you know that I recently covered the allegations, the uh, overwhelming allegations that were levied against uh, Illuminati, AKA Blair Zahn, um, a, another rather large, not nearly as big as this person, YouTube channel. Um, and one of the things that was key in that story was the, fa was the way in which she was able to use her fame and her financial power to manipulate a 19 year old, a 19 year old fellow YouTuber who had a much smaller platform. Um, she was able to use the fact that she had so much more fame, um, that she had so much more access to money and was so much more stable to take a, a genuine, a kid, an inexperienced kid and exploit him massively, control almost every aspect of his life. If you're interested in learning more about that, this of course is my conclusion. If you want all the evidence for that, I recommend you go check out my former Drama Mama videos all about the Blair Illuminati situation. You'll find them real easy. Just search Demon Mama Illuminati. Um, this is another situation where we have a established, relatively famous, relatively well established, like, like financially established person using that power to take advantage of somebody else who is younger, who is uh, less experienced, who it does not have that type of financial independence. So this is a this is a serious issue that needs to be thought about and addressed. Um, relations between famous people and their fans are never ever going to be perfect. Nobody expects that and nobody demands that at all. Obviously, people are humans. And I think that's part of what bothers me so much at the end of the ukulele song of being like doesn't mean they're a bad human they're just human yeah obviously people do make mistakes but that's not what's being talked about here what's being talked about here isn't just mistakes it's not just like one single incident it seems to be as far as we can tell and as far as is being reported by the rolling stone a serious chain of incidents with a lot of fame on the line. Again, this Miranda Sings person, her main channel has 10.3, I believe, 10.3 million subscribers. Let me just double check here. I'm just gonna make sure I got my numbers right. Miranda Sings, where's the main channel here? Miranda Sings, sorry, 10.7 million subscribers turning allegations against you into a teachable moment musical number about how everyone makes mistakes obviously everyone makes mistakes and it is obviously true that famous people are no different but we're not talking about somebody uh fucking up 
uh, and, and saying something wrong or being too harsh or something like that. These are allegations of, uh, of a celebrity over the course of time building extremely uneven, extremely unbalanced relationships um, with fans to to content to to benefit from that, to gain from the from that fandom, to gain uh, 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 access to people, to gain access potentially even in this case it looks like to to sexual uh, uh, favors. I we're gonna have to find out. While Ballinger has a successful vlog account that focuses on her life as a performer, comedian, and mother of three, most people know her for her most famous sketch character, Miranda Sings. The character whom she de debuted in 2008 wears high-waisted pants, slick back hair, and has a drawling nasal voice. Her most telling look is her trademarked bright red lipstick f drawn far past her lips to give Miranda a crazed effect. She's rude, entitled, can't sing, farts and burps for laughs, and shoots down every criticism with the unwavering belief that she'll be famous. And while the costume might have become synonymous with cringe millennial internet humor, Ballinger juxtaposed her sketches with an online persona dedicated to steadfast kindness and positivity, which attracted a wave of young fans. Ballinger was one of the first YouTube stars to straddle the line between internet famous and real tangible celebrity, permanently changing those understandings in the process. At the height of her popularity around 2016, Miranda Sings was one of the faces of YouTube stardom. She grew to 10 million subscribers on her, on her Miranda Sings channel alone, which didn't account for another 10 million subscribers on her vlog and personal channels. That's crazy. She had countless collaborations with fellow YouTubers, won a 2015 Teen Choice Awards, produced several national and international music tours, and had a limited guest run on the Broadway production of Waitress. Waitress. She was the first face on pop star Ariana Grande's star-studded Thank You Next music, music video, inter was interviewed on Stephen Colbert, and starred in her own Netflix original series named after Miranda Sings famous catchphrase, Haters Back Off. Through it all, Ballinger would often include her family and friends, like her brother Trent and her best friend Corey DeSoto in her team, featuring them in videos, sketches, shows, and fan interactions. Ballinger, like other early YouTubers, was doing it all without established rules, says Jamie Cohen's PhD, an assistant professor of digital culture and media at Queens College, especially when it came to how, uh, especially when it came to how they interacted with fans. The earliest YouTubers had no real guidance. Okay, this is another thing that I have to talk about. There aren't any guidelines even to this day. Okay, there is no guidance. Okay, YouTube. Sorry, YouTube, but YouTube doesn't give a shit, okay? There is no, um, there is, there's, when you become a YouTuber, anybody can make a YouTube account. There's no training page you have to go to. You're not an employee. They don't tell you uh, how to interact with your fans. They, they just say, interact with your fans. They don't tell you, there's nothing like that. There's just, there's no, there's never been any, there's never been any guidelines to being famous. The only thing that you could say exists is that there's like mentorship from other creators, but keep in mind, sometimes the creators that would mentor you are the abusers. Sometimes they're not mentoring you, they're abusing you. Some of the things that we're talking about here should be general practice things. There's no excuse that you can make about there not being a book um, that tells you not to behave inappropriately towards children, okay? That is a no, no training, no YouTube video uh, uh, is, is going to be able to, to teach you that. That is something that people should be able to figure out on their own or should learn as a result of their life with the people that they socialize with. Um, like, like you should learn these things and be able to figure out certain things. It's kind of like there's no YouTube video that's gonna tell you not to be a murderer. You know that? I mean, there probably is actually, but still. Uh, there's no mandatory training at any job that tells you don't kill uh, the, the customers that that's they there's an assumption that you know generally that it's good to not kill the customers okay 
So while it is true that there's no real guidance in early YouTube, there is also no real guidance now. And for certain things, that doesn't matter. And for other things, it does. I do think that um, that I do think that there that that these platforms are eventually going to have to take some action in order to talk about like how like set some sort of standards and rules for how people can engage with their fans. Um, but also, this is just a problem of celebrity in general. Um, again. This is not a new problem in the internet era. Uh, you know, musicians, rock stars, the, the most famous people of all time have always found themselves uh, in positions of incredible power where they can take advantage of that and use that for bad if they so desire it. I hope that all makes sense. Okay, let's continue. The earliest YouTubers had no real guidance. They were these mostly white kids that were basically saying, oh, we're fighting against the gatekeepers, essentially inventing the platform as it went. They made their own rules. Early on, the comment section became the place that dictated how content was created, and it developed into a strange competitions where fans themselves felt like if they were noticed by the creator, it gave them power. And at some point, YouTubers learned that parasocial relationships are their success model. To a degree, yes, and also no. But that's, again, parasociality, I've said this a hundred times, parasociality wasn't invented in the YouTube era. In fact, the term, parasos the, the term parasocial, I believe, was coined uh, in the 1950s with the advent of television and the popularity of radio. Um, let me double check on the exact date of that. The term parasocial interactions. Let's see, I want to be sure. Yes, the term was coined by Donald Horton and Richard Wohl in 1956. So while the internet age has brought new forms of parasociality, parasociality is something that has existed for all of time. I mean, think about the crazy stalker fans and things. I mean, there's been entire movies made about this, um, like fans who become so obsessed with a, pers with a person, sometimes to the degree that they even think they have some sort of ownership over that. But it goes both ways, right? Yeah, King of Comedy is a movie that is like, oof. Yeah, Beatles Mania. There's, this is like a an, an, an very old thing. And of course, you could even argue, yes, as Delini points out in chat, you could even argue that this concept goes way before the era of television and radio um, to people worshiping uh, famous, uh, uh, performers like Shakespeare or famous royalty even. Um, oh, Elvis obsession is another one. Marinara says, I wonder if YouTube doesn't comment on healthy viewer interaction habits because it leads to more views and they don't want to discourage creators from stumbling upon parasociality. In my opinion, uh, there's no way to confirm whether it's intentional or not, but all I can say is that it benefits the business model for people to be as parasocial as possible. It is obviously, it is incredibly beneficial to YouTube for fans to spend as much time being as obsessed as possible with their favorite creators. It's just the truth. But that's also true for record labels. That's also true for television shows. That's also true for movie stars. It's true for basically any form of celebrity, um, which is why a healthy society um, would address these things, would teach people these things outside of just letting it run wild. But maybe this is how it happens. Maybe people talking about and 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 making and 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 actually addressing and grappling with these issues is how these issues start to get fixed anyway let's continue the article i think i've made my point about about uh parasociality 
For McIntyre, it was this sort of interaction, Ballinger's emphasis on talking and responding directly to her fans, that drew him into her fandom and covered up what he calls red flags in their interactions. It was a gradual thing, McIntyre says. He started with just following accounts that tweeted about Ballinger's content, and before long, he was an active part of the community, interacting with every video and social media post, as well as actively discussing Ballinger in multiple fan group chats. The first time McIntyre met Ballinger was in 2014 at a tour stop in Dublin. It was very professional. I was a fan and she was the celebrity. But after they met in person again in 2016, McIntyre said that their friendship became real. The two went from talking through tweets to direct messaging. Um, where, according to screenshots reviewed by Rolling Stone, they would discuss the comedian's content as well as more serious matters like her online haters and impending divorce from then-husband Joshua David Evans. Adam was 14 at the time. Ballinger was 29. That is so inappropriate. That is so beyond inappropriate that is so many steps beyond inappropriate oh my god it can be hard for creators sometimes to know how much they should connect with a fan sometimes somebody who was once a fan or who is a fan at some point becomes an actual friend that is a thing that can happen it is a thing that happens especially, it especially can happen when you're a small creator, when there's not all that much of a, uh, of, of like a difference in, in, in celebrity, that you meet people who like your stuff and they become your friend. That can happen. And it can happen in a way that's not unhealthy. However, okay, giant however, when you are at your peak of 10 million subscribers, and you become quote unquote personal friends with a 14 year old while you are 30 years old to the degree that you are messaging a 14 year old about your divorce, that is so many levels beyond what we were just talking about a second ago. That is inappropriate in so many ways. It is so beyond inappropriate. I, I, it's hard for me to even overstate. That is a, that is a, from the basis, just a very unhealthy foundation, okay? And keep in mind, again, so these shots, these images have been reviewed by Rolling Stone. Direct messaging, this isn't even just, this isn't even just like a group chat, okay? It would be one thing if there was like a group chat with like 5,000 members where Ballinger was like, oh, my life's so hard. And then 5,000 people responded with little hearts and go, oh, I'm sorry, your life is so hard. Okay? That's like, uh, that's like one thing. But this is direct messages. This woman, Miranda Sings, was messaging at the age of 29, a 14-year-old, personal messaging about her divorce, about her life. That is really, really across the line, okay? There are so many different things that this could have been that wouldn't have been uh, sus as fuck. There was a group chat with a small number of fans. This says this is direct messaging here. And even still, a small chat is a totally different vibe than like a social media page. For example, let me let me just try and outline this right now. Right now, there are uh, there are Twitter pages of celebrities that have millions of viewers and sometimes those celebrities talk about issues in their lives on their Twitter page and they'll say, man, had a bad day, whatever. And millions of people will see that. That is a very different dynamic with very different expectations than 10 or 15 people or even 30 people in a privately invited group chat. And it is a, and if you're curating a group chat, even if it's of uh, of 30 people and you're inviting a 14 year old in to that type of relationship, that is not appropriate when you are a a YouTuber with 
over 10 million subscribers. That is not okay. That is not a safe, healthy, or good thing at all in any way, shape, or form, okay? Again, like I said, there are all kinds of ways in which you could go, oh, maybe this isn't perfect. Maybe it isn't great to have you know, young people in this space. Maybe it isn't great to have young people in this space. Maybe it isn't good to have fans in this space where it wouldn't be so concerning. But when you're direct messaging a 14 year old about uh, your relationship uh, as a 30-year-old over time, as a 30-year-old celebrity over time, that is not a healthy or good thing. Okay? That is, that is drastically abusing a power imbalance. Okay? That is not good. But let's go. I was looking at it like this golden opportunity of trust, McIntyre says, and I, in the moment, didn't really care if it was morally right or wrong because I was just grateful that she was talking to me and not anyone else. It made me feel like I know something other that, uh, that other people don't know. They know Miranda Sings, but I know Colleen. That kind of sums it up right there. Especially when you're talking to a kid who can't recognize First of all, it doesn't look like there were any appropriate boundaries being set by uh, Miranda Sings. And secondly, kids don't have, a lot of kids, most kids don't have the ability to recognize those boundaries. In a Twitter group chat called Colleenies Weenies, Ballinger would send sexually suggestive messages according to screenshots provided by McIntyre and reviewed by Rolling Stone, asking questions like, are you a virgin and what's your favorite position? Once in response to a message from McIntyre that read, my ass looks so good today, Ballinger responded, pics Adam. Okay. So you have a special group chat for fans. When you have millions of subs, there are kids in there and you are directly asking them, do you see how many levels across the line this is? Do you see how many fucking levels across the line this is? This isn't just, oops, I made some mistakes. Sorry, figuring out social media crap is weird. This is, that is so far across the line. That is really bad. She described this as a fart joke. Is that what she was referring to? Well, that's the thing. We're going to we're going to have to rewatch the ukulele song, won't we? McIntyre first raised alarms about his and Ballinger's interactions in April 2020 after hearing rumors from other fan pages that Ballinger had been discussing him in a negative light. Weeks earlier, she had given him the password to her Twitter account where Adam drafted and posted a po tweets with her approval. That is insane. That is an insane thing to do. One joke he wrote about Ballinger coming out as a Megan Trainer fan got major backlash with hundreds of users deriding it as homophobic, leading to the Ballinger deleting it. That April, McIntyre posted a 25-minute video titled Colleen Ballinger Stop Lying. In it, McIntyre said that his friendship with Ballinger was exploitative, alleging the YouTuber used her power to get free labor and then drop him when it was convenient. That's what it sounds like to me. He added that many of their past conversations had strayed from typical fan celebrity relationship to an imbalanced friendship. McIntyre also brought up past situations he felt uncomfortable with, issues he said he had previously overlooked because of the fr his friendship with Ballinger. Most specifically, in 2016, Ballinger and DeSoto sent him a lingerie set while on a live stream. That is off the chain. 
that is off the chain. In an apology video responding to McIntyre, Ballinger said the gift was a stupid idea, but it had been misconstrued as creepy. I should have never sent that. I don't know what part of my brain was missing at the time, but I'm not a monster, I'm not a groomer, and I shouldn't kill myself. You sent a 14-year-old a kid on a public stream, right? On a public stream? On a live stream. You sent a kid a fucking lingerie set while inviting that kid to a pro oh my god this is so fucked up holy shit that's fucked up that is not just that's not just creepy that is beyond inappropriate a kid that you've already lured into weird private in inappropriate private relations that you've already uh, asked to do free labor for you you get like this is such a this is guys I'm not gonna lie if all of these things are true which Rolling Stone has said they've seen evidence of this it is possible that Rolling Stone did not receive evidence of this however that is basically categorical grooming. The, I, the idea of making sexual jokes like post ass pics to a minor, uh, talking to a minor as if they're your equal when you're a famous person and you're taking advantage of that fame so that they know that they can't say no and they don't have any life experience and you're cajoling them into doing more things, giving them your Twitter password so that they seem like they're closer to you than, uh, than you, th th so they seem like they're more and more on the inner circle, sending them sexual items. That is really inappropriate, and it does match what is generally framed as grooming. It is it is trying to hyper familiarize yourself with a with someone so that you can take advantage of. That's what grooming is. Grooming is when someone takes it uh, tries to familiarize a a young inexperienced person slowly over time, grow the familiarity so you can get away with abuse. And she responded to this with a ukulele song. People accepted Ballinger's apology and accused McIntyre of trying to ruin her career. For almost three years, according to posts reviewed by Rolling Stone, Adam was called slurs, threatened, and doxxed by Ballinger's fans. Insane. I think it's really disgusting to try and use the YouTube doesn't have good rules or or boundaries or guidelines. Being a YouTuber can be very confusing and sometimes you make mistakes. Using that as an excuse for when you send lingerie to be opened publicly by a 14 year old who you have uh, who you have totally totally overshared with who you have a, a, essentially uh, befriended as an adult as a very famous very rich very influential adult who is an avid fan who is you know is an obsessed fan and then that like comparing those two things is insane okay and i want to be clear and i want to be really clear about that because there are fucking things that are very difficult and confusing about being a YouTuber. There are all kinds of weird shit that happens. God knows basically every YouTuber you've watched has probably had, you know, mod team issues. They've probably had conflicts with other creators. They've probably had conflicts with fans. It sometimes goes both ways. Sometimes you encounter fans who are really, really unhealthy towards you. These are not even in the same fucking ballpark, okay? Not even in the same galaxy. So her using the excuse, wow, it, it's literally just, it's taking a real issue and trying to twist it to cover something completely un, uh, completely off the chain. This is not a case of everyday oddities or bumps in the road or mistakes that are made or, you know, people 
getting in a fight with their mod and their mods a volunteer and it's not good which you know these that type of shit can happen all kind of fuck, fucking people get in sometimes youtubers will get in fights in the comments and that can be a not good thing because if a youtuber is large enough and they fight with somebody in the comments of their videos it can lead to that person getting dogpiled and i would say that's probably not a good thing but that's like the type of thing where it's like hey bro you probably shouldn't have done that you you as the youtuber should have paid attention to the size of your channel before you flew off the handle on somebody but it's not that's the thing that the first category the second category is things that aren't even in the same fucking galaxy and that's what we're talking about here with the ukulele apology retcon says when whenever has been opening a video with my legal team has advised me not to say anything but ever been a good idea extremely good point Well, let's keep going. We got to keep going. By the way, if you are here and you are enjoying this very strange, very off-the-cuff drama mama, given the circumstances, please make sure that you press the like button down below and press subscribe. I do all kinds of stuff like this. Um, I cover really high-profile drama that I feel is really important, uh, uh, specifically when it has to do with the YouTube space and the rampant abuse and exploitation that goes on in these spaces. Um, and if you're interested in that kind of thing, that's one of the many topics I talk about on my channel. So press the subscribe button and the like down below. All right, let's go. McIntyre was one of many fans asking for presence during the stream and initially thought it was funny. In an apology video responding to McIntyre, okay, we already read that. People accepted Ballinger's apology. Well, of course they did. She's a celebrity. Uh, Ballinger has a massive advantage over this tiny fan who she was uh, it, crossing a lot of lines with. When it began in 2020, in the midst of the pandemic and virtual schooling, Mac excuse me, goodness, McIntyre said the harassment got so bad that it essentially isolated him from everyone he trusted. It didn't stay that way forever. Less than two weeks ago, on June 10th, Cody Rance, another former member of the Miranda Sings fandom, posted a video that caused opinion to turn. In a now-deleted video, Cody, who uses they-them pronouns, confirmed the existence of a group of the group chat, Colleenies Weenies, along with the above-mentioned messages from Ballinger to McIntyre and other minors between 2016 and 2020. So that means we have two separate people who were able to cross-reference the, the chats and the images. Over the past two weeks, dozens of former Miranda Sings fans who had previously accused McIntyre of lying have publicly apologized to him on social media. But what has become more shocking is the other fans who've come out to share experiences similar to McIntyre's, their own stories of being bullied, intimidated, and embarrassed by Ballinger and members of her team. Alex, a now 23-year-old fan living in Ireland, ran a Ballinger fan page with over 22,000 followers. They tell Rolling Stone she stopped posting as much after being mocked by DeSoto over her weight during a fan meet and greet. I tried to brush it off. I was close to tears after that encounter, Alex tells Rolling Stone. It was, it was confirmation that my idol thought that I was fat. Becky, who asked to be identified only by her first name, joined Ballinger's Twitter fandom around 2017 when the YouTube star was well on her way to mainstream success. But she tells Rolling Stone that the parasocial relationships Ballinger cu cultivated within her community created toxic responses from other fans, who she said would attack other people who, felt that, who they felt were dispa disparaging Ballinger. At a 2019 live show, Becky was called on stage to participate in the yoga challenge part of the show. She was asked to lay down on the ground on her back, facing, a, facing away from the audience. Ballinger, as Miranda, proceeded to lift Becky's legs above her head and spread them wide. As Ballinger spread Be Becky's legs, a fart sound played over the speaker. Cue Miranda running away and the audience bursting into laughter. While the joke was innocent, Becky tells Rolling Stone that even though she immediately felt embarrassed and exposed, she was afraid to speak up and be cut off from her idol and community. So that's the fart joke. So the fart joke is that she invited a fan up on stage and then made it seem like they farted. 
I was mortified in that position. I was in shock, but I had many like friends throughout the fandom that I didn't want to necessarily lose. So for a little bit, I was pretending to be like, yeah, that was really funny. And I was worried that I would be called ungrateful because I got to go up on stage. I trusted her so much and looked up to her for so long. I didn't think she would ever do something like that. I will say that just, that seems very mean. Was Becky, was Becky a kid or, I mean, I assume Becky was a kid at the time. That seems, that seems like a really mean thing to do to a kid. I'm not going to lie. I, I do think that's very weird, but I, I don't know if it's like abusive, but I do think it's very mean. Like, I mean, comedians do all kinds of crowd work, but they, first of all, they usually don't do it with kids. And secondly, their crowd work is usually limited to like, I don't know, like a comedian is a different, like if you go to like a, a Tim Heidecker show and you are like participating in the crowd, you might get embarrassed a little bit if he does some goofy crap. I think that's a really mean thing to do to a kid. I don't know if it's like, I don't know if this counts as like abusive but I do think it's uh, I do think it's very mean, and I do think that it could really hurt, like really hurt a kid's mind. Like I don't know, I don't know. That's that does sound. That sounds like it's something I would not ever do that type of a joke on a kid or anything like that. I'm more concerned over her spreading this kid's legs. Yeah. Yeah, that is very weird. If you're a comedian, you shouldn't do mean crowd work with, with children. I agree. Uh, I agree. Like, when I think about, like, like, okay, think about this. At, like, baseball games, a lot of times the mascots will, like, invite a kid down to, like, run around the plate with giant shoes or something like that. Like, that was something I did as a kid at a baseball game. The mascot picked me out of the crowd and they gave me mascot shoes and I had to run and I kept falling over. And uh, they made a whole thing out of it, like the mascot fell over, but the mascot ended up being the, the butt of the joke, not the kid. You know what I mean? Like the mascot, he was like, he was like, oh, you fell over, and then he falls over and gets covered in dirt, and then you win the race, and they give you a little, like a little hat or whatever. Like that's what I think of when I think of like crowd work for kids. It's like it might be silly, but it's not made to make the crowd like mock the child, which could be very, very hurtful to a kid that doesn't understand that type of stuff. It just seems like a really weird thing to like bring a kid up to embarrass them in front of a huge crowd, I, I I think it's a, I just think it, I don't think it's a good move. I don't know if it's like abusive per se, but it's definitely fucking weird. Wait a second. So somebody in chat says that uh, the girl was like in a dress and like it was obviously a pre-planned bit. That's fucking weird. That's fucking weird. That's really fucking weird. <sighs> okay, let's continue. Let's continue. Oliver, a former fan from Pennsylvania, says Colleen's motto of spreading happiness drew him into her fandom. Oliver, who is trans, identified as a girl at the time. But after joining in early 2018 and following Ballinger and her family on the site, a follow back from Ballinger's brother Trent quickly turned into constant communication. Messages reviewed by Rolling Stone over a year of communication with Trent complimenting Oliver's looks, act asking him for photos, and telling him to text anytime. This is insanely inappropriate. This is insanely inappropriate. Anything we talk about stays between you and I, read one message. Insane! That's insane! That is insane! You would look good pregnant if you ever want children one day, read another message. At the time, Oliver was 13 and Trent was 33. That is in fucking sane. That right there, oh, anything we talk about is between you and I. You're my special fan. I chose you from the audience. That is insane. This is grooming shit right here. 
if those if these things all are real and Rolling Stone seems to believe that they are that these were shown uh, via their account that is insane that is fucking insane I was confused but I brushed it off Oliver tells Rolling Stone I was too scared to tell my mom because I didn't want her to take away my phone and to not trust me that's really sad and even when I started to become uncomfortable, I kept thinking to myself, this is Colleen's brother. So many people in this fandom would probably love to have messages from him. Oh God, this is tragic. Oh God, that's, that's so tragic. Trust or a lack thereof is also something former fan Johnny Silvestri thinks of when he recalls his time in the Ballinger fandom. He tells Rolling Stone that in 2012, when he was 15, he and other fans spent hours video chatting with Ballinger, first on Skype and then on another public chat room called Tiny Chat. Rolling Stone reviewed screenshots showing Sylvester, Ballinger, and other fans in the in the chat rooms on camera. Sylvester says Ballinger and DeSoto, DeSoto cultivated personal relationships with the fans, talking to them about their emotions, feelings, and experiences. They treated us like they were our older siblings, like they cared about us. It was a weird dynamic, but it felt like a very tight-knit family. Oh, God. But the family vibe also meant that lines were blurred. Silvestri says when he was 16, he traveled from Chicago to attend a Miranda Sing show in New York. There, he was brought up on stage and given a, a signed paper crown from Ballinger, as well as a personal phone number of Evans, Ballinger's then husband. Insane! D an insane thing to do! That is an insane fucking thing to do! Oh my god, that is fucking insane! Silvestri hadn't come out as queer, was being bullied at school, and was months away from dropping out entirely. He considered Ballinger, and by extension her family and team, as his escape, his confidants. So when he was offered a position as an assistant on Ballinger's tour, he accepted in the hopes that it would lead to a future in the entertainment industry. Instead, he describes a work environment that thrived on parasocial, on parasocial and intensely one-sided relationships between Ballinger and her fans. There is now a pattern that has been established across all of these people of Ballinger getting into very overly personal chats with very young fans and then recruiting them to do low or no paid work. And notice, this isn't even, um, this isn't even like, this isn't even like, uh, uh, oh, you get to be a moderator on my subreddit. This is, uh, come help lug my shit around for my music tour. Come ride, ride around with my team of people that I, that I, I'm going to ignore you and, and rope you in for. This isn't like even fucking, again, total different gal, oh my god, this is. Yeah, it's like Illuminati stuff. It's like, it's not just, it, it's not even like video collaborations. It's not anything. It's literally come get on the tour with me, do a bunch of hard labor that I don't have to pay you for because I'm riding on your parasocial attachment. This is, this is no, oh my God. This is not just a little whoopsie shit. This is like so far across the line. And not even to mention, that's even before we mention the fact that her brother and her husband were, were giving their personal phone numbers out to minors. He claims that the same dynamic was used on him to prevent him from speaking out about hurtful behavior. More specifically, Sylvester claims DeSoto, Ballinger's best friend, screamed at him and verbally belittled him. Behavior he claims Ballinger personally witnessed and did nothing about. He also adds that Evans nurtured a friendship with him only to use him for free labor and for his social media accounts and emotional guidance, creating an even more unbalanced dynamic. 
yep, there you have it, free labor and social media, uh, and, and to have this kid who has a big social media account promote you and shit. I found solace and safety in this online group of people, and these grown-ass adults abused it. Since Silvestri has begun publicly posting about his time on the tour, only one member of Ballinger's team has responded. Evans acknowledged Silvestri's claims on Thursday, posting a public apology, saying that he had acted inappropriately. Well, that then you have confirmation from the uh, from one of the accused that this did happen. Right there. Evans acknowledged Silvestri's claims and posted a public apology. My hope is that I can help remove some of the burden by acknowledging your experience and taking accountability. Evans also apologized for dragging other underage fans into abusive fan creator dynamic with him. Honestly, I didn't understand the damage it would cause. Bullshit! He tweeted on June 15th. I got messy and sought validation through innocent people. Children. That's gross and I feel absolutely terrible for it. Dude, you weren't just asking, you weren't just asking a kid to retweet your post. You fucking gave them your personal phone number. You texted them about your emotional problems. You brought them on tour with you. That is fucking insane. Even with a public turn of opinion, McIntyre tells Rolling Stone that he doesn't feel vindicated. He feels embarrassed that he let himself get hurt and upset that it took three years for people to even believe him. Having people dox me was soul destroying. It's still embarrassing for me to have so much of my life out on the internet. I'm not at, mad at, I'm not at that place yet where I feel vindicated because it's embarrassing and I hate to sound cringy, but it really is fucking traumatic. No, dude, that's fucking traumatic. You are, you are in the right for that. That is, it, you went through way too much, you went through way too much shit. Since Adam has repeated his accusations against Ballinger, the YouTube star has gone silent. On June 12, Ballinger, Ballinger restricted comments on her Instagram and TikTok accounts. Even though she's currently two shows into a national tour, she has not responded. Now remember, the response is the ukulele video. We're going backwards in this particular drama mama because of the ukulele video that dropped just a few hours ago, at, pretty much at the beginning of the stream. Oh God. I want to prove how easy it is to not abuse trust, Adam says. As a content creator, you can't control the baseline parasocial relationship that happens. That's true. However, you can feed into it and you can abuse it, and that's when it becomes a problem. That's what I believe Colleen does. Cohen adds that, that as more content creators become celebrities, he and other media experts hope that people will learn from experience and draw strong and ethical boundaries around fan interactions and relationships. Today, the transparency is way higher. You can no longer generally exploit your fans post Me Too, Cohen says. The newer generation of creators, they know what happens and that you have a responsibility to not do that again. It's almost a matter of breaking generational trauma. I don't really agree with that description. First of all, no, actually... The Me Too era didn't fix all these problems, and no, people don't still know that. Um, and it will, it as we have seen, it will, uh, it continues to be a problem that famous people, extremely famous people with a lot of money and power, can abuse people, uh, especially when they have rabid fandoms that will do whatever they say. Um, I do agree that more people know about it, and I do believe that it's really important that we take time which is part of what I'm doing right now, to actually highlight this shit so that people become aware and don't, uh, don't, and, and are able to protect themselves. And I don't think of comparing it to, to generational trauma is very accurate. Hannah with the $20 super chat. Demon Mama, spend this on something fun if you can afford to. Thank you very, very much. I will, uh, I will, I will make sure that everything's taken care of and then I will spend it on something fun. Thank you very, very much. I appreciate that. Okay, so this is allegedly a, a, hold on. I have to see the, the segment. Apparently, I have been sent a segment of a, ver of an inappropriate live performance by this person back in 2016. This is not the yoga thing. This is apparently something else. This is actually um, a, what a ton of people have said that this, like there's a bunch of videos about this one. Um, 
I believe I was told the timestamp was here. Let's just take a look here. Do you want a cheese ball? Um, I'd love them. I can't believe I'm reaching in there right now. Oh. Okay. All right. So this is a part of a performance where uh, she puts oh, cheese balls in really her- really are on stage. <laughs> <laughs> so in order to keep- You can see her here. She's putting cheese balls. And then if we jump a little forward, she puts the cheese balls in the front of her pants. And then right here, Shouldn't you know if you bread it? She's eating cheese balls out of I'm her pants. This is a very young child. I'm just kidding, I'm not I'm just kidding. So, oh my God. Do you want a cheese ball? Um, I'd love them. I can't believe I'm reaching in there right now. <laughs> Why the fuck would you, why the fuck would you ever set up that joke for a kid's show? All right. I can see why people are frustrated about that one. I can see why people are angry about that one. Combine that with the embarrassing kids by making them do yoga on stage. This feels real bad. Yeah. Ah. <sighs> Now keep in mind, again, even by her own admission, she is a PG-13 uh, entertainer, which is parental guidance max, you know, max age 13, not that that means anything. That's her admission. But we can obviously see that her actual fan base is very young, that she is writing these skits and these jokes for very young kids, that her content targets very young kids. And of course, we now have the Rolling Stone article confirming evidence that she was taking these young kids, contacting them, giving them personal messages, giving them her personal, her, her associate's personal phone numbers, her husband's personal phone numbers, uh, 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 even going so far as to send them lingerie. Yeah, but it's like the Cosby show, but imagine if Bill Cosby put cheese puffs in his pants and had a kid reach in to his pants on stage to take a cheese ball out and eat it. Do you have a link to the yoga TikTok thing? Okay, the next thing we are going to watch I am not, no, that is not happening. Uh, this is, uh, also, yeah, in Ma well, in Ma yeah, yeah, I don't need to in Metroplex. We know where this would go. I think that was a, I think that is a bad joke. I think it is a bad setup. I think it is a, it is absolutely horrible. 
uh, when you consider literally everything else that's going on in this situation. By itself, it would be bad. By itself, it would be like, hey, you really, really, really shouldn't have done that joke with a kid on stage. Uh, but it's especially bad considering the context that we have so far. Why are so many people laughing? The reason so many people are laughing is because this is a performer, she's behaving clownish. And in and of itself, while I agree that it's inappropriate, the cheese puff joke is not the worst joke on the planet. It's it's not good. It's not, I don't think it's appropriate at all. I think it's an inappropriate joke. However, there's obviously uh, plenty of people there who thought it was mildly funny. I don't think it's appropriate to uh, invo to like have kids jump up on stage in a show situation like that and have them reach for a snack in your pants. I think that's fucked up, okay? But I can also understand why a bunch of people there would laugh it off. I don't, uh, what I'm saying is I don't think that the crowd is a bunch of fucking, like a cabal of, of like, e child abusers. I don't think like the crowd is full of a bunch of child abusers. I think it's a bunch of people who aren't thinking very deeply about it and who are just like, oh, it's funny, chili, silly cheese balls. That's what it is. Straight women sometimes have no concept of them being able to be creepy towards kids. Well, this lady went, Miranda Sings has gone way past that. Okay, guys, let's be real, okay? The cheese balls, the cheese balls isn't even the worst part of this. How about the giving a 13 year old your husband's cell phone number? Can we just remember what the, what, what the whole thing is? Like, I get it. It's fucking weird that a bunch of people were laughing at that and didn't go, hey, maybe you should fucking cool that down. But uh, let's just recall that in the rest of this, her husband, her adult best friend, and her brother were texting and messaging with and video chatting with minors who then they later recruited to do free labor for them on their music tour. As Gay Fesh has said, this is just the tip of the cheese ball. Okay, we have to watch this video. This is the initial allegations video by Adam McIntyre. And we're gonna watch this, okay? Let's do it. Let's do this. Um, I'm just gonna jump right in. So, for a little bit of context, in 2020, I posted this video which was called Oh, we should talk about the first one. I guess we should watch the first one, right? Or is that going to be Colleen Ballinger stopped lying three years ago and then Colleen responded with a video called Addressing Everything. Um, in my video, I focused on things. I mean, this was 2020. So I was, I had just turned 17 and this the video. DM from Corey read. I just turned 17 in this video and the purpose in making this video was because I find out that Colleen had been um, talking shit about me and that Corey, who's her best friend and lives with her and is like, you know, her best friend had also been talking shit about me. And I kind of reached like a breaking point of like, I had done so much for this woman. And I think I need I... to turn up the audio. Here is the TikTok about the other one. Okay. Colleen traumatized. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here's the, this is, okay, so this is the video about the, the yoga one, okay? We should probably do that before we figure out the other one. Let's do the yoga one first. Sorry about the slight uh, jumping back and forth. I want to make sure that we can get all these things. Somebody mentioned this one. Let's watch it. Colleen traumatized. Hi, okay, my name is Becky. I'm the girl. We have to turn this audio up. This audio is not loud enough on this video and this video has one over a million views and that is a lot of people to be seeing this story without hearing it from me so i want to explain this so i was a fan of clean and all the ballinger family for a very very long time and i think in this video i was about 16. if you've never been to a miranda show clean frequently has segments where she calls people up on stage one of those segments was the porn bit which i'm not really going to be explaining in this video but that's why i was kind of trying to dress skimpy so that i would be called up on stage and basically get degraded by Miranda. 
But I did not get called up. Was the what bit? For that, I got called up for the yoga challenge. Now, as soon as I stood up from the audience, I saw Colleen's eyes widen because she realized I was not wearing pants. But for some reason, that didn't stop her from continuing. In fact, no adult at any point stepped in in this situation. That so is insane. This is this is actually worse than the cheese balls. If you're doing a yoga challenge on stage when you are you you've decided you've chosen to do yoga challenges with a at a kids show that you deliberately designed the show for kids, you know kids are in your audience, you are choosing the kids from the audience, you choose a kid from the audience with no with no pants. In fucking insane. That's fucking insane. That's fucking insane. This is way worse than the cheese balls. The cheese balls is bad enough. This is fucking way worse. We get to the point in the yoga challenge where I am laying down and Colleen is spreading my legs basically as far as she can. No, piss corn, you can't be serious about that. You can't be serious about that. I think it was corn, right? She didn't say the porn bit, right? She said the corn bit, right? Can anybody who knows about this tell me? Is it horn? She spreads them so far that you can see the spandex I was wearing under my romper, which oh my thank God. God I was wearing. Now, the original video posted by Xander, Xandar, I'm sorry if I pronounced her name wrong, is only a screenshot, but there is a whole video of this. But that screenshot is the most important because that is the moment I will never forget where I was laying under Colleen and she was smirking down at me while thousands of people were laughing and I was terrified that my body wasn't covered enough up enough by the spandex or the romper. I basically felt naked so it felt incredibly sexually violating. I was younger and my body was still developing and I was still becoming comfortable with myself so for her to use my body as entertainment on stage really set um, my confidence back quite a lot. And not to mention- Carpe Diem says the porn bit is a joke where she calls two girls up on stage and calls one of them porn for dressing skimpy. No, this can't be real. You guys have to be making this up. Do we have, do we have evidence of this? This can't be real. I'll read what she's reading, says, the porn bit is her getting two girls up on stage. One of them is dressed like her and the other one is wearing more revealing clothes. She says the one who is wearing a crop top is porn. That's fucking, in that's fucking insane. This is real, I've checked it. We've now had three separate people confirm this. That is insane. So we started with the cheese balls, we went to the yoga, and in the midst of investigating the freakish yoga shit, we've now discovered the porn bit. This is so fucking ridiculous. At a show aimed for kids, deliberately targeting kids, where they're fucking, gr fucking giving their personal contact information to kids. People on TikTok censor porn by saying corn. Okay. Sorry. Guess I had a boomer moment. After all this, after the show, I had to walk back to my car where there was many men staring at me in a very predatory way that they were not looking at me before because of how exposed I had been on stage. So I literally did not feel safe leaving the venue. And I'm not saying this was sexual assault, although people are debating that in that comment section. But as someone who has been sexually assaulted, this situation gave me that same feeling where it feels like you need to purge and like clean out your insides. You know, just that nasty, gross feeling. There's a couple comments on Xander's video being like, oh, she signed up for that. Why is this such a big deal? Blah, blah, blah. Colleen exploited my minor body for entertainment and money and did not protect my safety at this show. As an outsider looking into this situation, it may seem like this wasn't a big deal, but this was really pretty scary for my teenage self, and especially as someone who loved and looked up to Colleen. And I could never say anything because everybody loved her. But this is who she really is. She uses kids for her own gain. I was a minor, and again, she did not protect me. 
So if you're watching this and you're thinking about taking your kids to a Miranda show, I would advise you to think twice because you may come back with years of trauma and I don't wish. I would also advise anyone from thinking twice to going to one of these shows. This seems grossly inappropriate. Wait, so this is a clip right here from that bit? That's a screenshot from that bit where you have like a a young child that is holy fuck holy fucking shit this is so bad this is so fucking bad So this is a clip of what is so-called the porn okay. bit. Um, let, um, let me get my pointer we'll just watch that again. to help you guys really understand what I'm talking about. <laughs> so Taylor it was, Taylor Swift. Taylor is wearing this nice purple cat shirt, just like mine. It's very conservative, it goes all the way up to the neck. Nice long sleeves, pants that go all the way down to the floor. This is very nice, very attractive, very conservative. This is a perfect example of not porn. This is porn. The skirt is so short and flowy, all it would take is one gust of wind and we'll see all the creases and crevices underneath. And it's so tight, we can see the entire shape of the chesticles. This is a perfect example of porn. Now, what is your name? Eva. Exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, porn. Not this was a recurring bit, so many minors would quote unquote dress skimpy to try and get her attention to get picked. Oh, and it just keeps going. It just keeps going and going and going. Porn, not porn. Do not fret, Ava, I'm gonna help you out, okay? Because listen, we are at Miranda Singh's funeral and there is a dress code here, which means no freaking porn. So I'm gonna help you. But first, give Taylor a round of applause for helping me out. Okay, Taylor, don't jump off the side. We don't have insurance. Goodbye, thank you. We're just gonna take you away to the back. I'm sorry? I'm sorry, what? Thanks. Goodbye, thank you. We're just gonna take you away to the back. She said, I just wanna take you away to the back, and then she does an eyebrows at the, cl at the crowd. All right, Ava, um, yes. Okay, so, first things first, we have to figure out a way to get rid of this porn. Now, I have a wonderful way of getting rid of it, and it's called a stretchy solution to the porn, okay? So, I simply take one of these wherever I go, and we have an endless supply of them here at the funeral tonight. You put it over the head of the person being porn. And there you go. <laughs> Much better. However, Ava, is such a severe case of the porn. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. How is this supposed to be funny? I am gonna be completely honest. It's not funny. It's not, it's, it's extremely weird. It's an extremely weird thing to deliberately write a segment of your show where you invite kids 
up onto your show and you incentivize them dressing skimpily so that you can make jokes about them and they can get a little moment of fame, all of that is incredibly, incredibly, incredibly fucking weird. It is incredibly fucking weird. It is in, it, and, and of course, we now see that not only are these kids being brought up, but they're being given contact information, they're being given special treatment, they are being recruited into her inner circle. That is so, be, it, there's so many levels of inappropriate here. sexualizing and sa shaming children and then also joking about taking the children out back like i'm sorry but this is fucked up it's really fucking weird it's really fucking weird and it's not like these are like per these are like like actors it's not this is not just a show this is interactive this is random kids that are being brought up onto the stage that are being incentivized with getting to be on the stage with their favorite celebrity this is so it's so fucked up on so many levels it's not appropriate it's uncomfortable for the kids it incentivizes the kids putting themselves in vulnerable situations it clearly did put the kids in vulnerable situations it clearly expose these children to direct uh, alleged predation from the members of her team. And yes, I will say that a lot of these behaviors, when you consider them all together, it does very much seem like groomery shit. Having a regular bit in your show where you, uh, where you have a kid who comes up uh, that's dressed too sluttily and then you judge them and make jokes about them and then interestingly you also introduce them to your team having segments of your show where you have kids uh, come up and you spread their legs apart and make jokes on them and introduce them to your team and then you introduce them to uh, your inner circle where you where you're talking to them and you're getting close to them and you're emotionally bonding with them minors children and then you're asking them things like like what we had in the video that we're about to watch allegedly asking for ass pics that's fucking disgusting that's fucked up this is the exact type of insane shit that, that we should be calling out on youtube that people need to be careful around that parents need to protect their kids from this is the this is the fucking actual shit Yeah, and and just keep in mind, there's like people all over the country that are freaking about, uh, freaking out about drag queens existing, non-interactive shows where somebody dances around in stage. At worst, in like a a uh, a a uh, like I don't even know. That's not like a like a like a dramatic manner, and that's what people are freaking out about. And this person's been going for years doing this shit at live shows. The cheese balls bit was a normal bit too? No. No. This is some this is some child beauty pageant tier shit. It is. The Rolling Stone article did not represent the yoga situation well at all. No, I don't think they did. I don't think that I don't think that article did a good job representing it at all. <sighs> Jesus Christ. Fuck. Okay, well, we have another video to watch. Okay, here we go. Hi everyone. This is the first video Wait, here's another one with another kid. Oh my god, she did do it again with another kid. She they censored the kid's face at least. Here she is doing it again. There she is. She offers them to grab the cheese it's out of her pants. Jesus fucking Christ. Jesus fucking Christ. So you got the porn bit. 
you got the cheese balls bit, you got the uh, you got the yoga bit. Don't all of these things seem like really, really bad things to be doing with kids on stage? Doesn't this seem like a really, really, really bad thing to construct your show around when you are a kid's entertainer? Especially, especially when you consider the group chat, the fact that she was giving out her personal contact information, the fact that she was spending hours video chatting with these kids, that she was giving her entire team access to these kids, allegedly. Oh my God, there's more. There's, oh my God, there's just endless porn bit videos. Oh my God. I so deeply worry about the general culture suburban wasps build because this is some Bible camp tier humor where she slut shames these girls as a bit. Yeah, but it's it's double, right? Because it's a joke. It's supposed to be a joke, but the girls who are coming, who are getting called up on stage are being actively incentivized. Remember the part that Becky said where she felt like after the show, there was a bunch of adult men that were looking at her weird because there were adult men at that show, including people who were working with Miranda Sings. There's a two, there's two sides to this. It's not just that she's slut shaming people as a bit, which is in and of itself, like that is some, there is some fucked up psychology going on there. But there's also the fact that she's actively as a regular part of her show, targeted at kids, inspiring young people, young kids to dress uh, in in skimpy outfits so that they can be highlighted out of the crowd so that they can be literally targeted which we now know that she was at least somewhat regularly making post-show connections even going so far as giving out her personal contact information to these people Are her videos marked as for kids? No, because she says there it's a PG-13 show, which is literally, I was right, that it was literally the uh, it's ephemophilia thing. But for for a, a Miranda thinks, oh, well, it's actually for PG-13, so they're not kids, it's 13 year olds. Insane, insane. Okay. Okay, let's watch. Okay, we are going to watch Adam McIntyre's original video. Let's do this. Let's do this. Before this video begins, I just want to tell you that you know I've been making daily videos recently, but I just want to tell you that I am going to stop for a while and I am taking a break from just my social medias because there's been a lot of shit going on, which I'll tell you about, but I've just had enough. Honestly, so that's where I'm at right now. So I love you all. At the time of this video, he was 17. Yes. And I'll see you whenever. This is a video that I never thought I would ever have to make. My intentions behind doing so are that I can disassociate myself from the situation, but also not continuously get asked in future about Colleen and Corey and what happened. Or also hearing things that apparently came from me, but I've never said out of my mouth. The purpose behind doing this video is to get my side across and defend myself. As you all know, I was a good friend of Colleen and Corey, and I discovered Miranda Sings in 2012, and I found Colleen through this. I ran a fan page on Instagram that I created in 2014, and a fan page on Twitter that I created in 2013, which I dedicated all of my time to. It was just me supporting the Ballinger family. It was simple. And I've been supporting them all up until recently. Oh I've went God. to two of her shows, do you see how directly this, this shit benefits her? That these were super fans that she was isolating out and luring in to encourage them to, to spend more time doing free advertisement. This person at a very young age was running multiple fan accounts ex by his own admission uh, just, just, that just existed to support the Ballinger family. 2016 and 2018 and met her both times 
After 2016, during a live stream that I'll discuss later, me and Colleen started talking on a more personal level. And by 2017, we were good friends. Or what I would have called good friends. Very quickly, we started talking a lot. And my parents were really happy to see the fact that someone like Colleen Ballinger was so dedicated to talking to all of her fans. This slowly turned into me getting private details about her divorce and what was happening with the relationship with her ex-husband. Around this time though was whenever my parents started getting a little bit more cautious and were wondering why a 30 year old was talking to, at this time, a 13 year old about her divorce. That is extremely, indeed, extremely sus. That is in incredibly fucking sus, yes. So from this point on, my parents really observed the conversations that I took part in with Colleen. Our relation- Radon, thank you very, very much for the $5 uh, donation. Deeply appreciate that. Thank you for supporting the show. Thank you. I hope, I hope things go well for you. Relationship slowly turned into me always being asked to go find drama for, whether it was about Josh, ex-friends, or fans. At the what? time, I saw this as harmless, and I was just really excited that my favorite person in the entire world wanted to talk to me. Now looking back though, I can see that it was just a way of baiting me to constantly get me to get her the information. And in 2016 to 2018, I was always asked to follow along gossip sites. Now the gossip sites were talking about her ex-husband and her relationship and the divorce. And I was very much so made to follow along with that and then feed back that information and what they were talking about. Now me doing this, it led to my name getting thrown into the mix in these gossip sites and Adam, the character, the person, whatever you want to call it, started getting really attacked on these sites too. Now keep in mind I was only 14 at this time. So then I was getting targeted on these gossip sites and I was getting called a pick me, manipulative, and other words I won't say just because my extended family are watching this video and I, I really, I can't. <laughs> Once my parents saw all this, they asked me to distance myself from Colleen and all the Ballinger family. So it was at this point that I stopped really giving that much information or as much as I did to Colleen. But I would always be baited and dragged along again. Whether it was subscribing to my YouTube channel, which made me really happy, and then I would be asked again to get information. Or a time where I was really upset because my name was getting thrown into the mix of a lot of things and then I got a YouTube comment on one of my videos and then I was asked again. Or in one case making me believe that I would be flown out to America to go to VidCon, me and my brother would be, along with someone else in the fandom, there's no need to mention their name. And that was strung along for ages as well, to the point where me and my brother actually bought an external one of them wall plugs for America, and then that just never happened. The reasoning for this was the year before she did a competition where she flew out two fans. She said this year she was going to fly me and this other person from the fandom out and then two other fans and then... Do you think this is a problem with children's media that contains live actors like Blippi and others perform, per, pose a significant risk to children because children str struggle to separate the, cl the show from the actor? Yes. I do think that children's media with live performers where children are involved in it that there should that parents and Anybody who is watching that type of stuff should be skeptical and should be watching out for the kids because yes celebrities who are Deliberately targeting children with their media do have undue access to those kids And if they're not being you know if they're not being held accountable if they're not being watched They could very easily and have easily abused children by the way, this is the same reason that um, youth pastors, priests, pr uh, people who are in positions of authority uh, and importance over kids are often uh, perpetrators of abuse because they have undue trust and undue access to children. Very much so. That just never happened. But obviously because I thought I was going to get to meet all my American friends that I met in the fandom, I was just so excited and at like 15, that never happened. At age 15? Or whether it was just sending me a nice message and then I would do it. And because I was dumb, impressionable, young, naive, whatever I want to call it, I have so many names for what I believe I was, I'd always cave, honestly. I try um, not to be upset obviously, with myself. Obviously, we were, we're talking about somebody who had millions, and a, a celebrity, a rich celebrity is asking a kid to do all kinds of shit for them and promising them to fly them to America. This is insane. This shit's insane. And keep in mind, these, these records have been verified by organizations like Rolling Stone. A literal child.
myself because I was 13 to 15 during this time. I'm still really young now, I'm only 17, but looking back, it's hard to not get, like, ah, oh, fix yourself. You know, stop engaging in that, you're being used. I've been told so much private information about the divorce, but I won't get into that in this video because I feel it's unnecessary. That is but all so, the parties involved know so that I have it. This information was always really hard to hear and digest as a 13 to 14 year old because I was always led to believe that Josh and Lean were the couple that I should have looked up to. In the vlogs, they were always really happy, so going from a sudden shift of idolizing Josh Lean, I had Josh Lean merch, from that to them being. That's the name of their celebrity couple, apparently told all this really shit information about the ex-husband really just it affected me back then and i'm not gonna lie and it affected of, me of course it would of course it would affect you no a a celebrity an adult celebrity should absolutely not be unloading this shit onto a kid that is that is so out of line so out of line way more than it should have it just it just made me really confused. So anyway, in 2016, Colleen and Corey were doing a live stream and they stumbled across my Twitter account. They found my tweets really funny and this was the day before we officially started really talking. They found my Twitter so funny that they said they needed to send me bra and panties that Corey was wearing during the live stream. What? They were used ones? That was not, that was not even included in the Rolling Stone article. Oh my fucking god! Now, looking back at that, I'm still a minor, I'm still 17, but looking back on that, I just... <sighs> you know yourself. And also, minutes later, they made fun of how my parents would react to the fact of, like, two 30-year-olds sending me bra and panties, lingerie, to name it properly on this live stream. So again, looking back as a 17 year old, I'm just really disgusted at the situation and confused, honestly. They went on my Twitter. They weren't used? He just said that they were worn by somebody. The bra and panties were worn over her male best friend's clothes. They weren't used in the typical sense. Point taken. Still incredibly sus. Just, I, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. Is that is that that much better? The goal being that this is that you're you're deliberately sending a piece of intimate clothing that you wore to a child as a way to reward them. I I, I guess it is. It's more hygienic. But I feel like the actual what's being what's being communicated there is exactly the same. I feel like it's the same. It's more hygienic for sure. But I think it's what is being communicated is the same. Is what I'm trying to say here. Okay, I'll keep that link on hand. Uh, uh, beyond safe words. Thank you. You found the actual clip from the uh, the yoga challenge thing? Okay, we'll take a look at that in a bit too. Because they thought it was funny and then they said they had to send me the bra and panties. Here are some clips from that live stream. Ew! <laughs> Homeschooled Christian University realness. <laughs> Adam, Cookie Boundary said, Hi, you are such a fashion icon and treated the <laughs> ugliest picture of me. This is honestly the worst <laughs> outfit. <laughs> He's so rude. What made you order these ugly clothes? <laughs> Adam! <laughs> His, those clothes are nasty. He's so rude. Oh my god, he's so sassy. <laughs> Your Twitter account is making me laugh so much. Oh my god, that makes me laugh. I want to send him something. Do you want the bra, Adam? Adam, do you want the bra and panties? Tweet right now. 
to a 14 year old oh my god yeah adam let me know what you want he's in ireland hi adam i love you okay i'm sending him something okay maybe he'll want and and they they almost assuredly knew this they were very familiar with who adam was and colleen ballinger was talking with this person in the background the panties although then his parents will be like you're not allowed to watch who is sending you panties oh my god they acknowledge it and then his parents won't let him watch us anymore they fucking acknowledge it they fucking acknowledge it Even <laughs> mom, don't worry. I this shit is fucking insane. This isn't. And remember, by the way, at the end of this, we're gonna replay the little oopsie uh, ukulele song, so you guys can keep all of this in. Uh, this all, so you can just keep all of this in in scope. <laughs> Here also I've included a video that is now on private on my channel, but it is me talking about what happened whenever I met Colleen back in 2016. Had a conversation. Oh no no no, I remember what happened. We walked up and whenever I was hugging her she said, I'm so sorry I didn't bring your lingerie. Yeah, because uh, in her live stream she said she wanted to send me her lingerie. I'm not lying, she did. Um, trust me. She hugged me and we were talking and she was like, I'm so sorry I didn't bring your lingerie. Um, my parents were right- So just so we're 100% clear, Colleen and the Ballinger family 100% knew that this was a kid. They literally, really, literally joke about it in the video where they're joking about sending the lingerie that is being worn by, uh, by the husband in real time. They knew all of this. They knew all of this fucking shit. This was a kid that they were making sexual jokes towards, that they were involving in the family business without pay, that they were roping in using their celebrity. There's no, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about this. They knew this. They just acknowledged it live on video. There is no oopsie I didn't know here. This is just... That's just what it was. Sorry, that was the best friend. Sorry, that was the best friend, not the husband. My, my mistake. Apologies. Hi, mate. So thanks for that. Clean. So I did get sent the lingerie, and immediately, whenever it arrived, my parents were furious. They were so angry, and Obviously. they took it away. And I didn't Obviously. know if they still had it. And I asked Absolutely. my mom, did she have it? Because she knew I was making this video. So she was looking all morning, but she did find it. So I still have this. My mom kept it. I didn't even see these because my mom had just taken them away because they, she was so shocked. So this was what I was sent. I don't even know, sorry. I don't know how to, which way this goes. This is what I was sent, okay. Am I doing like a haul for you? I don't know. And then, I hate touching it. Then, Sorry, thank these. you for the correction on the, I, know, I know that's go. not the husband, that was the friend. I apologize, I got the husband and friend mixed up. My but bad. these as well. So, I was genuinely still surprised that my mom had these, but so that was a big warning sign, but because I was so young, I didn't take it. Naive. So yes, as Marinara points out, even if that was a horrible joke bit for content, the fact there was no reason to follow through and send it. Again, everything about this situation has gone so far beyond any sort of plausible oopsie. There is no plausible oopsie in this situation. When you know that, the, that a child that you have been DMing and manipulating to do things for you uh, is a child and you not only make a joke about sending them lingerie on, on your stream and then you go to the next level and actually do that. There is no oopsie doopsie going on here. This isn't just, oh, YouTubers, it's a frontier. You know, people make mistakes. No, nope, nope, that doesn't fly here at all. And this is a this is the three year old video. This is a video that came out three years ago and only got Adam McIntyre, the person in this video, a a, a boatload of harassment. Twenty eighteen, Colleen came back to Dublin 
and she invited me out to lunch and I was so excited to see well my friend again my mom on the other hand was really cautious and waited at the end of the street for us to be done with our lunch and so whenever I'd finished walking with Eric and Colleen she would walk me back to the hotel she made it very clear that she didn't trust Colleen and she had just wise mother wise mother honestly if I was the mother I would have put down the laid down the rules and said no this person is harming you this person is but the truth is maybe the mom didn't know how far it all went the lingerie thing it would probably have been like a no contact situation that should have been but it's hard to know if the mother knew everything that was going on behind the scenes but at least the mom was trying it does seem like the mom was legitimately trying be mad at everything that I've been told and used for for all them years but I love my mom she's great she still wanted to be supportive so that was her way of allowing me to go to that lunch was her just staying on the street so that she could be near so that was June 7th of 2018 so much has happened from then until now that I won't really talk about in this video but I do want to talk about the situation that made Colleen turn on me and it makes me really sad because this is someone that I loved so much and seeing not only someone I would have called a friend go out of my life like that, someone who was my idol for years. It's weird and I don't really know the words to say because I just feel awkward whenever it comes down to talking about it. That's why I don't talk about it, that's why nobody knows about anything because I felt awkward. I felt like I made a mistake maybe. So since 2017, Colleen had been coming to me for video ideas, tweet ideas, Instagram oh ideas, God. anything for the Miranda Sings character, but also some for herself too. It was to mainly focusing on helping her in the Miranda account from 2017 on, but there was a little part of helping her own channel out with ideas as well in 2017 to 2018. So I just helped give ideas. She was aware that the Miranda character had passed its time and that she didn't really enjoy doing it anymore because she couldn't really be problematic as the character anymore. So in December of... Huh? Huh? In 2017, I proper started giving tweets for the Miranda account. This included tweets on iCarly, Brazil, and a number of other things. I'm pretty sure she was in Hawaii at this stage. Yeah, she was. And whenever we talked about how Miranda wasn't really doing well anymore, she messaged me and then said, well, help me. And that's then whenever I started giving the tweet ideas. So on the 25th of March of this year, I started giving more ideas again because Colleen was aware that the Miranda character was becoming very stale and inactive on social media. And on the 26th of March again, she started tweeting my ideas, which included Animal Crossing stuff. So on the 25th and 26th, I presented her with about 15 different tweet ideas. So then came a tweet about Miranda Sings coming out as a Megan Trainer fan, which she was initially confused about. And she says, I don't know what you're saying about Megan. So then I explained it again, and Colleen was fully going to go ahead posting it herself, as you can see here. So I helped give her the photos and the concept and she said, when should I do that? Should I do that today or tomorrow before I post the video? And I said, what are you waiting for today? And she says, okay, cool. Showing that she had every single intention to post this tweet on her own behalf. And then on the 26th of March at 12 minutes past 10 PM, she messaged me and said, I have a present for you today. I've never done this with anyone, but I'm trusting you. Oh my god, to a ki to a child. Oh my, oh my god. And then she proceeded to tell me about how she was planning on making me her social media intern. Right now, I'm considering you my social media intern, but if things go well, we can talk about me hiring you part-time for an hourly rate. I don't like using your creativity and insight for free, so just know I'm not planning on taking advantage of your help. I'm planning on making it more official if it works out that way. How does that sound, Queen? So then I got into the account and she basically just sent me a message saying go crazy. So what I had to do was tweet, respond to fans, talk to fans, basically just get hype about Miranda again. So I spent my entire day and night talking to fans on the Miranda Sings account in group chats. I had long conversations just talking to people on there, talking to fans, tweeting them, and just going through the list of tweets that I had sent her thinking what will I tweet next. 
And then on the 27th of March, at 5 minutes past 1 in the morning, she sent me a message just a ha 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 and wait, you're all good, I see you've been tweeting. So this was after I said I was having problems getting into the account because of the email. So she had already seen all the tweets that had happened because she saw them on her timeline. So then she sent a message that says, Aw, OMG, they would be so sad if they knew it wasn't me though. Thank you for doing this. I'm so grateful, but I'm nervous they will know it's not me responding to them. That would backfire terribly. They'd be so mad, I'm stressed. But I'm happy they're all living for it. Do you feel like a secret agent spy? Oh like talking God. to them and shit is 11 year old Adam living tweeting for Miranda right now. Guys. Guys. This is really fucked. She's making a joke right now about how this guy right here, Adam, was a fan at a, as an 11 year old. And being like, oh, remember when you were younger? Wasn't that cool? Wouldn't, are, are, isn't 11 year old you happy at where you are right now at age 15, 14, 15? Doing free labor in an incredibly awkward relationship with a 30-year-old celebrity? So Colleen was living for the account and she was happy with what I was doing and she didn't hide that. And it was nice to see that she was really grateful with what I was doing with the account. So after a while of the tweets being up, Colleen just sent another message saying thanks for doing this. And then, sorry, I have to go back to my notes here. She sent me a screenshot from someone on Twitter and she said, uh-oh, am I gonna get in trouble? Be careful. I don't wanna be in a scandal and have to apologize. Please, please, please be careful. People are very sensitive these days. This is one of the main reasons it's hard to do Miranda now. People have a hard time understanding satire and jokes, especially with- No, people were just legitimately mad at you for doing weird porn, not porn segments with literal minors where you incentivize your fans to dress up in skimpy clothing at live events when they're when you're targeting children. That's not fucking being canceled by the wokes. Jesus. Sensitive subjects. I'm so glad everything is doing well. Even though you have the password, I need to approve everything before you post it just to avoid problems. It might slow down the process, but we got to be careful. Now keep in mind with Priff here, she had seen everything that I was going to tweet and had tweeted on the account. So then I was like super confused and she sent me a message that says, I'm not mad at all, I'm just paranoid because everyone always gets mad at me and I always have to apologize. And then please pay attention to this part because this is just what confuses me. She says, and OMG, I love everything you did today. It was magical to see everyone happy and excited to see Miranda come back to life. Then I said about how the followers and view count on the profile were up and she said yay queen of promo. And then I said about how I promoted her appearance on a show she was doing and she said she is truly iconic talking about me and my work on the account. Then we were having a conversation where she was talking about Miranda the character and the fall of the character and the fall of her public image after the divorce and her own feelings on that, but that's personal and unrelated, so I don't see any point of including that right here. So later in the night, she sent me a message and said, okay, I deleted the gay tweets, sorry, I'm too weak. I can't have people thinking I would make fun of the LGBTQ community. Don't hate me, but I was getting too many hate tweets. And she says about how it was her fans that made her delete the tweet. And so I just wrote back, I said, that's chill, okay, no problem, sorry about that. And she said, not your fault, you're so funny. I'm just too sensitive, it will take a while for me to get thick skin again, so be patient with me. And then I said, it's all G, just trying to work with you to make sure you can reach your full potential. And she says, I know. And then I say about the rise of interactions that the Twitter had. I and she says, I love you. Thank you for everything, for always believing and helping me. So even though she was saying this, she was slowly starting to put the bl
this poor fucking kid. This kid is just trying to defend himself here for shit that was not his fault at all. None of this was his fault. None of this was his fault. This is a grown woman, a celebrity, deeply emotionally manipulating a child. That's what we're seeing here. Going so far as to be like, I love you. What the fuck? That, this right here, that is, that is what, that this is the type of shit that grooming looks like. Sending lingerie, saying I love you, pulling them in closer and closer, isolating them from other people. Even making jokes about like, oh man, we don't want to get their parents mad. Oh, wouldn't that be a shame? This is horrifying. This Miranda Singh shit is horrifying. I didn't know how bad it was going to get when you sent me that ukulele shit. Blame and guilt onto me for stuff that she had already approved and was going to tweet on her own whether she had given me the password or not. Now keep in mind she texted me and said go crazy in relation to on the account, yet I only tweeted stuff that she had approved, including talking to fans and keeping updated in group chats. And at 8.51 on the 27th of March, she sent a message saying, Don't forget, don't post anything without my approval for now. Now taking back what she had initially said because she saw the fault that she had shown. The next morning and day were really rough for me. Um, I just want to say thanks to my friends and my parents and my family because that was rough. Vermin says, this is so much worse than I was expecting. All I knew is that she was a loudly pro pl problematic comedian. Yeah day it was such a bad day i saw someone i called a best friend turn her back on me and that really hurts so at 6 5 p.m on the 27th of march she sent me a message saying i'm getting an overwhelming amount of hate for the coming out stuff i don't know what to do it's like every other tweet i'm getting right now on my colleen twitter i haven't even looked at the miranda yet i'm scared to so 10 minutes later it turned into her saying how she apologized to one person and she said, the thing is, I agree with them. Queer baiting is not a joke. I'm super sad. I've upset so many people. I'm telling you, girl, I'm super sensitive, like near tears. Putting all this on a fucking, on a fucking 15 year old. I don't know if they were 14 or 15 at this time. Again, trying to guilt me and make me feel really bad for something that she had already approved and found funny. And she didn't see any problems with it. I'm going to be really honest for a second. I spent that entire day just crying in bed and texting my friends and my mom and dad were just comforting me the entire day. I was a mess that day. I was completely radio silent on everything. Ask any of my friends from that day. It was such a horrible day. Like it was so, so awful. I didn't even get a message from Colleen asking how I was. It was just guilt tripping me that I had done all this to her, almost as if I had planned it or something. So she continued to talk about it. She said, it's all anyone is talking about. I'm really upset. I would never post something like that and now everyone thinks I'm homophobic. I'm really, really upset. So right now she's seemingly taken back all opinions of me, of my tweet ideas, of my input on the account, for her saying thank you for everything you did. It was magical. I'm so happy the fans. Now it's, I would never tweet stuff like that. My fans think I'm homophobic. I can't believe this. And instead of checking in how I was as well, I was just getting- Beyond Safer said, like I said, the best overview of the of the entire drama uh, uh, is told by a former Miranda Sings fan, and Adam is in chat. Okay, we'll watch that afterwards then. The next thing we'll watch is this uh, Olivia uh, H3H3 uh, uh, react. Because if that's got lots of information on it, then we'll follow that. That seems like the best way to come to a conclusion for the drama mama. Short, snappy sentences to guilt me even more. At this stage, I had enough, and my parents had enough, and I sent the following message. I've logged out, and this situation will die down. People know you, and they were extremely excited last night. Mob mentality will make them think they have to believe a certain way. I hope you've seen the interaction last night got, and that there's so much more possibility for the character. The fans were just waiting for you to give them that moment. The series on YouTube has all positive comments and feedback. Twitter drama stays on Twitter. I love you so much and this will pass. I got left on red and I was ignored from this point on.
Also, to add that even though she found all her Jesus. tweets funny and she loved everything I did with the account, she deleted all my tweets after I logged out of the account. So... Yeah. So three or four weeks passed and I heard nothing. Nothing. On vlogs for days after, she milked how sad she was crying but never saying what it was. Which again was just another big F you to me. And I'd also been aware that Cory DeSoto, her best friend, had been shit-talking me in fan DMs during this time. He blocked me on Twitter and I called him out for it. Then recently I was showed DMs of what Corey had been saying about me in these group chats and what he had been saying that Colleen had said about me in these group chats. So there's a Twitter account, there's no need saying that at because it's just free promo, but it was basically just sending hate and targeting and harassing Colleen okay. Ballinger fans. I'm getting a lot of people saying that the H3H3 PowerPoint is very, very informative. So that's what we'll react to next. And uh, hopefully that will contain all the information. Apparently it has been signed off on and supported by Adam, who we're listening to right now. So if it's that level of good, if people are signing off on that, I think that will be a good way to get the rest of the information we need uh, to come to a conclusion about the ukulele apology. And the DM from Corey read, Colleen thinks, and then the at, is Adam. In this group chat with a bunch of other people, now I got sent this DM, thank you for everyone looking out for me by the way, and sending me this stuff, and I also got sent so much more on what had been said about me in these group chats from people I thought was friends, between Corey, Colleen, anyone. I have everything sent to me, people are, were always looking out for me, and I just... Whenever you're going through shit with something like this, whenever people are still looking out for you, it really means the world, so... You know who you are. So that Twitter account was basically just trolling and attacking Colleen fans, and I was, I was, I was hurt that it was believed that I had done this or even taken part in this. I didn't even know what the account was first. That Colleen believed that I was behind the account or even a part of it, not even just owning it, and secondly, that Corey felt brave enough to run off and talk about it in DMs. So obviously, Colleen had been running her mouth about me since my last DM. Keep in mind, I was crying most days after this because I was so upset that I wasn't hearing anything from her. Now I know that, oh, that's where the time- Obviously, that was, obviously this is going to traumatize a child. A child who is super, super, super obsessed. A, a, a literal young teenager, not like a 17, 18, 19 year old, a young teenager obsessed with a celebrity, gets brought into the inner circle of that celebrity, then ghosted by that celebrity, then shit-talked by that celebrity's close friends, and that celebrity is like literally a 30-year-old woman with millions and millions of subscribers. Insane. It went. I was obviously being talked about in these group chats and information was being fed in. So I sent Colleen this message and this was my goodbye message to Colleen. And that's hard whenever your room is filled with merchandise for her. Oh, God. Pictures from the concert with friends you've met from her, pictures of you and them, and all their memories. Been told by multiple people about how you and Corey have been running around saying I run a hate account for people who support you, which is extremely disappointing that your mind even goes to that place. I'm aware and swore my parents and have screenshots of everything from the past few weeks that Corey has said about me and in relation to you about me in these group chats and also everything else, but I'd never thought you would stoop that low, especially due to the 17 year age gap. Talk to me in 16 years if a 33 year old takes advantage of Flynn for years, then runs shit talking him on Twitter. You want to play that game? Why do you even bother following me? Do you know how hard that message was to send? to someone that I idolized, to someone I loved. So from Corey sending these messages from then until now, only things I'm seeing on Twitter is filling in the gaps of story of what people don't know. Adam did this, Adam must have done this to Corey, Adam must have done that to Colleen. Oh, Adam obviously ruined his relationship with Colleen by doing this. Oh, Adam obviously ruined his relationship with Corey by doing this. Is he still friendly with the Ballinger? This is all that I've been seeing on Twitter and that, fucking hurts. I was really trying not to swear in this video, but that really hurts. So I had to make this video because people are now slowly finding out that Colleen handed over control of the account to me, and before any other lies about the situation start getting thrown out, I had to put my side across because I'm fed up. 
and you know I've been vlogging every single day and I'm so excited about that. I've been doing daily videos, but I have to take a break. I have to stand back now because it's just gotten a little bit too much. And I can't believe I have to say that and it's even gotten to this. So I'm just, I'm really sorry to the people who I'm disappointed by saying that, but just know that this has been going on in the background for so long, but it's gotten so bad within the past like three weeks. And I've been trying to vlog every single day and be happy and make videos that are making people smile because people are messaging me saying that my videos are making them happy during this time and giving them a distraction. It's hard to do that whenever so much is going on in the background. So I hope I haven't disappointed that many people, but I just had to say what has been ticking in my head for the past three, four weeks. So, I don't know if people even watch this, people watch the end, I genuinely don't know. I don't know the response, that I, I don't know anything. I'm making this for me and for people to stop filling in the gaps about what I've done and acting like they know what I've done. I'm hurt and I need to take a break and that's what I'm going to do. I love you, thank you so much for watching. To the people who are still going to stick around after this, I love you, thank you and I'll see you whenever. So, peace. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Oh my god. That is a lot to take in. So again, this is from the channel Adam McIntyre. Adam McIntyre was also one of the main people interviewed by Rolling Stone in the Rolling Stone article that we watched, and also the person who has provided a incredible amount of evidence that the uh, ukulele apologist, uh, ukulele apology, uh, Miranda Sings, uh, uh, Colleen Ballinger person, uh, uh, basically takes advantage of fans, specifically targeting minor fans, um, and uh, puts them in dangerous situations, manipulates them emotionally, and mistreats them emotionally. And we have seen an absolute incredible um, amount of evidence of that so far. And we are about to watch a section that was a, a pre presentation that was put together, uh, uh, that was put together on H three H three is what we are going to be watching next. They put together a highly detailed PowerPoint presentation that goes through everything. Uh, 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 apparently, here I have been recommended this by multiple people. So this will perhaps be the final thing that we watch in this, except for of course we will be rewatching the ukulele apology, as I think that's appropriate. Uh, given that we opened this without w hearing the apology first. We we actually gave this Miranda Sings person the first uh, uh, the first word in all of this because uh, I was sent the ukulele apology and couldn't look away. Uh